If you are looking to build a DIY method to digitize the 8mm film reels you have laying around, uh, odds are you've looked online and found relatively few resources on how to build such a system. Uh, if you looked on YouTube, for instance, you will find a handful of very technically impressive machines built by engineers uh, that are just simply out of reach uh, for what most people can do. Uh, now, I am by no means an engineer. I'm just a college student who had a bit too much time on his hands during the pandemic. Uh, and so I'd like to share with you the system I made. It's a system that is very janky, but completely functional. And I hope that my process and my system uh, might inspire you and help you as you look towards building your own. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is that your system will be very specific to your circumstances. It will be specific to the materials you have on hand, the skills you possess, uh, the amount of time and money you're willing to put into it, among other things. So if there may be a few other processes that are more simple than building your own film scanning system, such as this one. For instance, if you have a functioning projector that already works, it might be simpler to just replace the motor of that with one of your own so that you can uh, progress the frame one frame at a time using the mechanisms that already exist in the projector. That's just one idea. Another option is, of course, just to send it off to somewhere else to do it professionally for you. Uh, if you don't care too much about having complete control over the quality of the film, that's just a very nice option for you to do. Although if you're looking for a bit of a challenge, a bit of a way to spend your time, uh, this is a very cool method and a very cool way to spend your time, especially if you have a lot of it on your hands, like I did during the pandemic. So let's get into it about how I made this uh, film scanning system for 8mm film. Uh, now the main premise of any film scanning system is to essentially take a picture of every individual frame on a film reel and then compile those pictures into a video file in software afterwards. So to do this, we essentially want to advance this reel of film one frame at a time and then take a picture of it. So when the system is going, it's advancing the film a little bit, taking a picture of it, advancing it a little more, taking another picture, over and over tens of thousands of times. Uh, so a system like this essentially needs to solve three different problems. It needs a way to advance the film, a way to take a picture of the film, and then a way to uh, take up the film in a take-up reel uh, after it's gone through the imaging process. So I'm going to cover all three of those solutions I found uh, in this system. So to advance the film through the system in a controlled manner, I'm using a sprocket wheel right here that I took off of my, uh, my grandpa's old film splicing uh, machine. Uh, I was very lucky to find that. Uh, so what that sprocket wheel does is it, it fits in the perforations of the film and can pull it forward through the system. Uh, now you might be wondering what all this winding is for. Uh, so that is essentially just to maintain tension uh, on this piece of the film as it's fed through to make sure that it's wrapped around as much of this wheel as possible uh, so that it doesn't lose grip of the film. If these uh, turns weren't here and it just went straight from the, the original reel through the sprocket wheel, it wouldn't have a very large grip. There'd only be like maybe one sprocket on the film at a time. So that's what these uh, these turns are for. And just to show you what I did for that is I, I was able to take a few of these kind of uh, official, official um, little, I don't know what these are even called, turny things uh, to put the film through. I also needed a few more. So I literally just put a little nail with a, with a little straw cut out on it to, to wrap around. Uh, for some of them, I even put a little microfiber cloth so that I could kind of clean the film as it went through. Again, this is all very DIY, very janky, but it gets the job done. And now to power that uh, stepper motor, the sprocket wheel, I'm using this Arduino on a breadboard. Now, this clearly is not the most, uh, the greatest technical achievement uh, ever, but it gets the job done. So I'll give you a different angle now, so you can see underneath, it's just a stepper motor uh, that's going to control that sprocket wheel. So what this Arduino is doing is it's using a, a stepper controller to advance that stepper motor enough to progress the film by one frame. And then it's also connected with this 2.5 millimeter cable uh, to uh, release the shutter of my DSLR. So the Arduino program is essentially advancing the stepper motor, taking a picture, advancing the stepper motor, taking a picture, over and over and over again. Uh, so that's how I control the advance of the film 
Now I'm going to go over uh, just quickly how I capture the film. All right, here's another angle that's closer to what the camera is seeing when it's capturing the film. Uh, so in this little box is an LED that I pasted on this uh, heat sink so it could stay on for as long as I need it to. And then in front of the LED, I have these uh, diffusion sheets that I pulled out from a, an old monitor. If you look in old monitors, they have a few layers of diffusion sheets. It's a good cheap way to get it if you happen to have an old monitor lying around. Uh, so I just make sure it's, make sure it's a, an even source of light. It's not really the most important part of this, but it, it's nice to have. Uh, and then I have uh, just a Rebel uh, Canon DSLR camera. Uh, that has a macro extension tubes with a nifty 50 uh, on the end of it. So to, to help me focus this, I happen to have a, a slider, which is very nice. That way I can just make fine adjustments to the focus if I need to, which I, which I do need to often. This is not a slider, of course, is not essential to this. You could do this without the slider to get the focus, but it is helpful. Uh, this camera is powered with a, a uh, dummy battery uh, into a power strip over there so it can stay on as long as I need it to. And it's plugged into my laptop. That way I can store the images on an external SSD instead of having to store it on an SD card in the camera. Uh, it also helps me line up the focus with the Canon software so I can see uh, what the camera is seeing from the computer. Uh, and it's a very nice system to get that working. So that's how I capture the individual frames. Now I'm gonna go on to what is probably the, the most difficult part which is how to manage this take-up reel. All right, so most film scanner systems, similar to this one that you'll find on YouTube, will use three different motors. They'll use one motor right here, where I have one. They'll use another stepper motor on the other side of the camera that runs in sync with the first one to progress the film. And then they'll use a third stepper motor for the take-up reel uh, to advance the take-up reel and make sure the film winds around it. Uh, the problem I had with this is that, uh, one, I am not the most comfortable with the electrical engineering side of things, if you could not tell from my uh, mess of a breadboard. Uh, and secondly, maybe most importantly, uh, I was unsure about how this take-up reel motor would work. Because uh, if you notice, as the film uh, winds around this take-up reel, uh, essentially the radius of that film uh, will increase as it moves outward. That means that the amount that this take-up reel has to spin it will have to spin more at the beginning of the process and less at the end of the process as that radius gets larger. I'm not sure how other people on YouTube have solved that problem, uh, but that was not a problem that I felt comfortable solving. So I figured that if I could just maintain tension on this take-up reel, I could get this done with only one motor. Uh, so the process of maintaining tension is where this uh, machine gets very janky and gets its name, of course, of the Jankatron uh, 2000. Uh, so to do this, I used a gravity-fed system. Here's how that works. All right, it's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I could be of some help to you in your film preservation project. And hopefully I can encourage you that you don't need to be a crazy engineer to try your hand at preserving your family films. Uh, of course, there's a lot of details I couldn't cover in this video. If you have any questions about something specifically I did in my project, uh, feel free to comment below. I'll try to get to it. I'll also leave as many resources as I can in the description. Uh, but yeah, I wish you the best of luck in preserving your family films. Yes.